the black he takes an undefeated record into the ring at 20 and 0 against Gilbert Baptist who came in at 17 and 11 with the Collins aptly calling Baptist the Freddie Pendleton of the middleweight division don't look at the record just look at the fighter I think at this point Ron Collins would have rather been facing uh, Gilbert Gottfried than Gilbert Baptist. I don't know, with that conditioner, you have to wonder. Squirt that conditioner all over his hair. I think right now, uh, Gilbert Gottfried is back in the locker room working on uh, George Floyd's head. <laughs> Champ Sean O'Grady at ringside in Birmingham. <laughs> Very determined, Gilbert Baptist. Aaron Pryor giving instructions from the corner. Now, now listen, if you're Gilbert Baptist now, and you have tuned the ear to the corner, you have Aaron Pryor yelling things at you, you have Billy Moore yelling things at you. Are you hearing any of that? You tune it all out, or do you tune into one particular guy? They're both very loud. You hear it all. You only comprehend, though, one, one you're so used to what, one training voice. And uh, though Aaron Pryor has been training with Baptist, Moore is the one he should be in tune to. So in other words, he's listening to Billy Moore. Yes. More. Much more. Much more. Inside the final minute of round number eight. Nice crowd on hand at Birmingham, and they certainly enjoyed the sideshow. Put on by uh, Big George Foreman. George playing to the crowd, that lovable heavyweight. A lot of nice people here in Birmingham. Good place. Great to be here. You know, it's funny with George, when you look back at uh, Foreman and Ali and Zaire, and you look at the roles that they have there, now in this Holyfield fight, Foreman is almost playing the part of Ali. And you got Holyfield, who is the uh, kind of the quiet one. And he is the people's favorite. You see him here. They, they, they love Big George. Everybody knows George Foreman. Now, you notice the back of the head of uh, Ron Collins. There is an inscription there, and we're going to take a closer look at the uh, hairstyle of Ron Collins. The announcer, when I first turned professional, announcer Gordon Wood, you know, he's a great announcer. <laughs> and he had seen me fight before, and, you know, coming up, I was a faster fighter, you know, with my punches and stuff, and he gave me the name, he say, the reason he called me tequila, because, like, when you drink tequila, it hits you before you know it, and he said, that's what I kind of did to my opponents there. Well, I think they need a shot of tequila in that corner. Sean, uh, let's get a uh, report card uh, after eight rounds. Go back to the original boxing blackboard. Well, the first thing that I said for Collins was use that right hand. He has not been doing that. He's been allowing for Baptist to stay on top of him. Uh, Baptist has done pretty well with the, with the right, the feint, and the hook. So for Baptist, I give him an A, 100%. Collins has to get, uh, get busy. He has two rounds to do it. It would be a tough shot for Ron Collins going into the last couple of rounds, needing a knockout to win a fight. He is not a knockout puncher. Seven KOs in his 20 wins. Well, perhaps he's going to show us something tonight. <laughs> not known for a knockout puncher, but... Well, he may have to uh, pull it out that way. Beating him to the punch is Gilbert Baptist with the left. is ranked number seven by the IBF, number 11 by the WBA, and number 12 by the WBC. Baptist is not ranked by a world organization. One good thing for Collins, he is a natural right-hander, and he's been landing with that right hook. If he could score with that, he would have more power than in his left hand. But not with his opponent staying right in his face like Baptist is. 
Remember, it was early in the fight, Sean, in the second round that uh, Collins moving back along the rope slipped on that short apron and uh, appeared to hurt his uh, left ankle. Now, he hasn't shown signs of that, but uh, could that have sh shaken him up there? Well, you know, he's gone consistently downhill ever since then. That could have mentally shaken him up. You know, you want, what you want to do is keep your opponent on the deck, however you do it, even if it means making him slip off the back. So being down, he was embarrassed, and perhaps a little bit hurt, too. And uh, mentally, he was hurt. That's the time remaining in round number nine. Stokes, the five fighter, made it 20 wins, 20 knockouts with a seventh round KO over Jose Barbosa, a fight in which Stokes came off the canvas in the second round to knock out his opponent in the seventh. This is the best way to fight a left-handed fighter, right on top of him. I bet you Baptist does not even realize Collins is left-handed. <laughs> The punches come at you the same when you're that close. He wants him to flurry here. Throw real fast, quick, snapping punches. He wants to flurry and steal the last part of this round. There are two kinds of gift givers at Christmas. The ones that give shirts and ties. And the ones that shop at Radio Shack. Where this stereo music system with dual cassette players is only one round. A final pepper rally in the corner of Gilbert Baptist, Benny Moore yelling uh, to Baptist, who came into this fight last uh, week. He's known about a week. Willie the Worm Monroe was supposed to uh, fight Collins, and he uh, shouted in the face of Baptist that they brought you out here to use you. They brought you in as a stiff, just making sure that he tries to take away the 10th round, although on Sean O'Grady's card, uh, Baptist uh, far and away leading this fight, and he is the more experienced 10-round fighter. This is the 12th time he's been in the 10th, and the fifth time for Collins. And Baptist has been in control of this fight since the third round. The first two I gave to Collins. You know, what, what Moore was wanting to do is make Baptist angry, angry at, at uh, the, the organization here, angry at this fight, and angry at Ron Collins. Oh, oh. Big by Collins, he gets one in. And there is the right hook from the natural right-hander in Collins. And look at Baptist now try to take that control back. Look where he is. He's right on top of Collins. He got hit and he smothered Collins. Oh. Collins getting a little more room, and he has been scoring well in the 10th, and he's got Baptist hanging all over him. And this is the way Collins should have been fighting since... The third round on. And the leaning by Baptist. All fight. Trying to wear down. Collins. Guts and determination from Gilbert Baptist. Inside the final minute of the fight. Well, the next fight, Collins may have Baptist inscribed on his head <laughs> instead of tequila. Well, here's another example where Collins may have been better off if this was a 12-rounder because he is coming on here on the 10th. But there again is Gilbert Baptist looking uh, like he's on the line of uh, scrimmage, pass blocking, and now tackling the running back. Well, unfortunately for Collins, it took him nine and a half rounds to figure out this style of Baptist. And here's the final flurry inside. Ten seconds in the fight. Good matchup. Give the Baptist make this fight. One fight can make a difference for a fighter. 
And this may be the one fight to catapult Gilbert Baptist. The aggressive style just not allowing his opponent to get started. Baptist had won eight in a row. He's come off two straight losses to Art Suano for the USBA title. And also to Quincy Taylor, and that was seven months ago. First fight in seven months for Baptist, who comes in on short notice and may have handed Ron Collins his first Gilbert. defeat as a pro Gilbert. and knock him out of the Come top in the ten in the IBF. So right now, the two fighters converse as the judges and the referee tabulate the scoring. And you cannot be overlooking any last-minute substitutes like Gilbert Baptist. That's what uh, happened here. Collins was overlooking him. Good showing by Baptist. I've got him ahead on my official, unofficial sport card. Collins not taking Baptist lightly, but unable to get on track tonight. Baptist leaning all over him. And uh, Collins says, to be effective, i got to get that jab going. And he never did. He realized the importance of it because he, that's, that's exactly what he told me. He watches our, our shows occasionally. Talks about how important the jab is to a boxer. But uh, we didn't see much of a jab from him. Unconditional love in the corner. Lynn Collins. And we are ready for a decision, and there seems to be uh, much uh, consultation. And you know what that means, yes. All right, here's Bill Kaplan. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Yep. Judge Ron Moon scores the fight, 97-93, Batiste. Yeah. Referee, yeah. referee Richard Steele scores the fight, 97-95, Collins. Yeah. The deciding vote is cast by Judge Flynn Gerald to score 98-94 for the winner, Batista. Well, the suspense mounted. We had Batista winning here at the ringside table, but it went on a split the decision. And look at the three, Pryor, Moore, and Baptist, who records the biggest win in his professional career. As he takes out seventh ranked middleweight, formerly undefeated Ron Collins. And Baptist pulls it off. And as we said in the beginning, there isn't a clear cut favorite. So you can't even call it a, an upset. Baptist with a 17 and 11 record come again, but had fought the better named opponents. And that comes through for him tonight. And now it is time for tonight's Power Punch, brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that distinctively clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bug. Power Punch, opening fight tonight. Undefeated Donald Stokes in the goal. He was down in the second.